what was perfect until the internet ruined it. Not saying it was perfect but disagreements were a lot more civil. You used to have to disagree with people in person, it meant you actually had to be somewhat considerate both of their views and of them as a person, and very few people were convinced they knew everything so they were a bit more humble in argument and you usually went for a pint with the person afterwards. Now you have a screen between you and the person you disagree with which means people don't see the person in the other side of it. They don't have to consider their point of view because they have some echo chamber they can retreat into and indulge in confirmation bias. And people think they know a lot more than they do because they have Google in their pocket so people aren't as humble as they used to be and are not so willing to consider that they might be wrong on something. You also don't have to be around a person afterwards you can act in really bad faith throughout without paying any price. Going to thrift stores and yard, garage sales. Before everything was sold online it was a great way to find cool, slightly rare things for a reasonable or cheap amount of money. I'd even say that early eBay was still pretty decent at finding things cheaply. However, now everyone thinks that everything they own is a rare, one-of-a-kind, super valuable item that's worth hundreds of dollars. I think that shows like American Pickers, Storage Wars, and Antiques Roadshow have also fed into this. Even though those shows can be fun to watch, for example, back in high school I used to go to this indoor flea market and get vintage vinyl for ridiculously cheap. I got the Beatles White Album for literally $6. Cheapest price for the same thing on eBay is around $50. Liking movies or TV shows based on your own opinion. There have been so many times I've seen a movie and thought, that was a pretty good movie, I wonder what other people thought about it dot 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 and my opinion was apparently wrong and I'm a horrible person. High school reunions. No one hardly has any anymore. Everyone can see what everyone is doing. Plus it's easier to keep in touch with the people you liked back then. Taking photographs, retouching has always existed but good grief, photos are added to filth, it has become the norm to wear a filter or remove totally normal features to create a glittering perfect shot to post on the internet. People don't just take photos of things to privately keep as memories, they also take them as a perfect advertisement of their lives, especially travel photography with the sheer amount of Photoshop monuments and skies. I don't even know what's real anymore. Professional photography. I don't think it was ruined because everyone has a great camera in their phones. It was ruined by oversharing. Taking photographs, retouching has always existed but good grief. Photos are added to filth, it has become the norm to wear a filter or remove totally normal features to create a glittering perfect shot to post on the internet. People don't just take photos of things to privately keep as memories, they also take them as a perfect advertisement of their lives, especially travel photography with the sheer amount of Photoshop monuments and skies. I don't even know what's real anymore. Video games but in a very specific way, specifically with competitive games. Playing against people is freaking amazing, and testing your skill at the game is something I love more than you could imagine. What got ruined was now for every little thing there's 20 articles about it and 300 YouTube guides from pros on how to just meta cheese anything. It's completely unfun facing someone. And 10 seconds and you can tell the exact hygiene page they ripped off from, and now instead of fighting them, you're fighting the strategy made up by the best player in the game. It's the most unfun, unoriginal experience in the entire time you just wait for it to be over. RTS games used to be tons of fun, but now there's a play-by-play -play guide for each second of the game. Games like TFT for League of Legends are only fun for the first two days before everyone and their mother plays only the very same meta up 100% kill them Korean strat from YouTube. Even fighting games like Smash Brothers suck now. 
I remember playing Smash 4, and just horsing around with a body. He refused to do anything but play Mario, grab the throw up tilt, up tilt, up tilt, up tilt, up special through combo, rinse and repeat until 78%, fireball to 80 plus, then grab pummel side throw, footstool, every single game, hours a day. For weeks because that's what the guide said to do. I'm so bitter about it. Information in general, truth, maybe. The internet made it so easy for malicious people to spread false information. The increasing popularity of any opinion makes it easy for people to have a bias regarding its truth. I hate it so much that I have stopped correcting people on the internet. Not perfect in the slightest. But I'm gonna go with journalism. All of a sudden the push for clicks became the most important thing and actually reporting events factually was abandoned. Add to this the political radicalization of these journalists, read, activists, that occurred due to the echo chamber effect, and top it off with these same journalists, from major publications, agreeing that certain outlets and certain opinions must be censored. It's a sad state of affairs. Each of these problems existed before the internet, but the new digital era we live in through what was a slow trend into light speed. Among us, the game itself is actually very fun and cool when you're playing with the right people. It took a huge downfall when the internet made it a huge meme and ruined the gameplay for a ton of people since there's not a lot of people in public lobbies that you can genuinely play the game with anymore. Pooping, used to be, you'd go into a little closed room and do your thing, maybe read a magazine or perhaps peruse the ingredients list of the potpourri spray you're gonna use in a couple minutes. Then you'd get up and leave. 10 minutes for a big one. Now it's a half hour ordeal. Your legs fall asleep. So when you're finally done, you still gotta wait a few minutes before you can actually walk out. And then there's the hemorrhoids. And let's not even talk about what the internet did with the actual poop. Cries and two girls one cup. You cannot enjoy a good lie anymore. I'll explain what I mean. Years ago you could go to the pub and wind to someone or a few lads up by saying something outrageous. You could keep it going for hours, days, weeks and sometimes years. Now everyone just fact checks everything straight away on their phones and it has ruined the craic. The statement of free speech. Free speech does not mean you can be a racist or a misogynist or literally anything, as there is no freedom of consequences. Anyone that uses the excuse of freedom of speech in the wrong way, doesn't know anything about it, and is wrong. Having divergent and dissenting views was possible once. People could have different values and live according to their more conservative and traditional beliefs. But now the internet is bringing on this extreme high mind and conformist monoculture and unfortunately companies and corporations are fully on board. If people don't want to be part of it they are targeted by mobs and get their livelihoods destroyed. Human variety is going to be obliterated. Adventure. I can think of something to do nowadays and then Google it and find videos of people doing it, tutorials on how to do it, and maps. In the last few years I got into watch YouTube hiking videos, and basically every step of the Pacific Crest Trail is documented, and I don't have any desire to go and hike it. Before you even start you know what's it going to be like. I went to Vietnam a couple of years ago and there it was everyone doing a motorbike trip. I'm sure the people enjoyed it and had fun. But like the PCD it's been documented so much that it's no longer an adventure. But it seems like one. Mental health. I mean, the internet does also help very many people with mental health. But it also makes it worse sometimes. Eating disorders for example. People can help with them but only seeing Photoshop influencer can also be the reason for them. News. Now everyone can publish fake, 
manipulated news and there are so many radical people who had no voice before. Now they create a Twitter account, they post shit and they find thousands of followers who share that radical, extremist thinking, creating more radicals when they are popular. They polarize the society. Collecting things. It's so easy now to simply get what you want instead of searching for it. And in many cases the prices of things has come down. My dad was a big baseball card collector. He had specific cards he wanted and really enjoyed going to conventions and card stores. Often spending a weekend driving to different towns looking for a card. Once eBay became a thing it sucked the joy right out of him. Most card stores closed and became online only, and any card he wanted he could easily find online for much cheaper than he would pay at a store or from a collector. So his passion dropped off. He said searching for an Ernie Banks rookie card was fun, took me months to find one in decent condition. Now I go on eBay and there are a bunch of them for cheaper. Sure it's easier but there is no fun in that. YouTube at the start now it's all clickbait videos, fake apologies, problematic teenagers pulling mean pranks for views, and influencer videos with heavy editing. It feels so fake now. At the beginning, creators seemed so real and down to earth. Videos were actually funny, not all of course. Editing was very limited and the ideas were more creative. I miss old YouTube. Political correctness. In the past people would get offended over actual offensive stuff and call out actual bullshit. Now people call out everything. Oh you're not breading the right way, cancelled. Comma oh, you don't support LGBTQ, cancelled. Comma oh, you didn't post a meaningless black square on Instagram, cancelled. Comma oh you didn't use slash s when you were being sarcastic, cancelled. Comma, oh, you spent £1,200 on a PC, cancelled. Comma, oh, you said something racist 10 years and no longer hold the same opinion and you are now a better person, cancelled. It's just people cancelling each other for no other reason. Also most kids cartoons, games and anime, wh what you have to make porn of ITWTF. The friendship with that random guy Ted you didn't know very well. He seems cool, likes your local sports team, has a good sense of humor, and knows a lot about the hardware tools you need at the store. Then you became friends with Ted on Facebook. Turns out Ted's a white supremacist. Basically every friendship I've ever had that was surface level has been ruined because of their crazy political beliefs. Fan fictions. They used to be a way for people to interpret characters in light of what they knew about the source material until it took a really dark turn. Fan fictions used to be very artfully written and today you have things like incestuous, special relationships between Disney characters existing. Thanks Internet. Differences in opinion. It used to be okay to like certain things and dislike certain other things whether they're popular or not. Nowadays though, if I say I find One Piece boring because of the constant reaction shots or I like X-Men The Last Stand, I'll get burned at the stake. On a serious note, people feeling privileged to not only have an opinion on you, your appearance, but to make assumptions and be informed. Watch Jessie Nelson in her hash shot and out documentary or framing Britney Spears. Game of Thrones, I'm not gonna argue that the last two season weren't rushed and suffered because of it. I will argue that the show hit hype levels not seen before in the pop culture, streaming era, and because of that would never have been able to meet the expectations created regardless of the ending. Video game magazines, don't get me wrong. I like that I can get gaming news as it happens on demand now. But no headline will ever get me as hyped as pulling something like an EGM or Nintendo Power out of the mailbox. I remember getting so excited learning about something like Mega Man X or Super Metroid because it showed up as a cover story in Nintendo Power. 
pawn shops, you used to be able to score some great prices on music gear because a lot of the time the shop owner was willing to haggle with you or didn't really understand what it was worth. Now they can Google it and see what it's selling for on eBay and set prices accordingly. Undertale, the internet ruined it and brought about its true potential. It's crazy how the internet made Undertale the greatest thing of all time. And the best part is, there wasn't even that much porn, relatively. Food, sure, it wasn't the best, but now we've got so many opinions on what should be eaten, what's unhealthy, what to eat more of, what to cut down on, and even more groups saying the exact opposite and all sides claim to have some kind of science on their side. I can't even figure out how healthy or unhealthy cheese is because there'll be people saying it causes sicknesses, some saying it's good for you, some telling you exactly how to structure your intake of it, and so many other things. For food, eating shouldn't be so debated and complicated dimo. Discourse in all forms, looking back a few years, the amount of consideration going into a single page of a newspaper of quality, in a book page, in a sentence was much higher. We are drowning in relationless data, feeling informed, and we get shallow interpretations for these tsunami waves which do not help in any way. Instead of understanding, we are tagging, instead of being outstanding, we display outstanding, yes. With we I mean the protagonists of our culture, German politicians, for example, are right now showing that they are not in control, but rather are actors of someone who is in control. Having any genuine interest was ruined by the internet by weird categorizations such as gamer or weeb. Just like and do whatever the fuck you want no one needs to be grouped together because of something that 89% of people like. My dad used to vacation to Florida, and to this one beach where it was common to find shark teeth. He says that it's now a lot harder to find them there since the internet now exists, and more people know about it. Probably already said but socializing, talking to people on the internet is so boring and you do it for less than a minute most of the time. I don't normally like talking to strangers in person and I'm always awkward. But it's so much more engaging and stimulating to do it in person. We continue to do it because it exists and so many others are on the train. It's sad that social media will probably never end. Word puzzles, I don't mean those a train is traveling, math problems. I mean puzzles based on vocabulary. Games Magazine had a monthly contest for years where entrants had to, say, find three consonants and make the longest words they could by adding only additional vowels, but with the consonants and every permutation. To enter you had to think OK, squeal is six letters, so say Kaylee would be longer, but does that have two L's? And what am I going to do for LQS? Eventually they gave them up. And I am sure it is because easily available and searchable databases made them either unfair or trivial. The internet, I mean. It wasn't perfect, but when I first got into it, very early 90s, the internet was fast, even on a slow connection, and it was simpler. There was no www, so all was text-based in shell accounts that you connected to, usually via Kermit. Those on it were there mostly for a purpose, and you had to have a general amount of computer knowledge to get there. Gopher was kinda neat. I never really got into using Archie or Veronica, but I used Pine for email. And IRC for chat after compiling a client. I had both the VAX, VMS and Nix shells to play on, and it was kinda fun. I ordered some CDs from CD Now, over Telnet even, then the web started. And at first, it was a good idea. Lynx was a nice text-based browser, but as the web grew in popularity, the need to make it more available to the masses grew, and while on the surface that's a good thing, it also brought us social media, and the ability of all sorts of groups to find each other, some good, some extreme, and with everything connected. 
comes the advent of those who want to take advantage of that for their own personal gains, and the flood of ads on everything, yes. It's nice being able to take my phone out of my pocket and have a world of knowledge at my fingertips, but there are times I miss the simpler internet that once was. The idea of the internet, a giant worldwide shared resource for discussion and learning that would elevate mankind and bring us closer together, the reality, one giant bathroom wall and everybody has a sharpie.